The Docker situation on Mac can be frustrating, but it doesn't have to be that way. Imagine if you could have a lightning fast startups, native performance, powerful features, and even Linux VMs as well. Well, you can have exactly that with Orbstack, an awesome drop-in replacement for Docker desktop on macOS, and here's why you should check it out. So getting started with it is as simple as downloading an app on your Mac, or you can use Homebrew if you want as well. I'll add the links in the description. Now, Orbstack actually comes with everything you need. It comes with the Docker engine, the CLI, it comes with Docker Compose, and a load of popular third-party tools as well. They're gonna really help out your developer experience. It will even keep these updated for you as well, as long as you keep the app updated. Now, you can see the UI is really clean and focused on what matters here. You can see you can go into your containers here for Docker, volumes, images, and you've got Kubernetes and Linux, which we'll be checking out in a bit. But you can see here, you can click into these, and we can just see our quick actions. It's nice and simple. We can see our logs, we can see the terminal and the files as well and also the port numbers too. One of the things I love about the UI as well is the menu bar. Up here you can go click on the menu bar, you can see your containers at a glance and you can access pretty much all of the quick actions that you would want to. So you can quickly see if your services are up and running, stop them, restart them and you can pretty much do everything from the menu bar. You wouldn't even need the UI itself. But don't worry though, this isn't just a UI wrapped around Docker. It has some really powerful features as well that we'll look at in a moment. But first, let's talk about one of the most important benefits, and that is performance. In benchmarks, Orbstack is 2.6 times faster at provisioning a dev machine than Docker Desktop, 2.7 times faster at building images, and uses between 1.5 to four times less power and CPU. That was one of my pain points with Docker Desktop. It's just how much of a resource hog it was. Even more importantly to me though, is that it starts super fast. Another pain point with Docker Desktop. You've actually been watching this race on my machine with the exact same setup between them, between Docker Desktop and Orbstack, and you can see just how much faster that is. But Orbstack goes way beyond just speed and efficiency as well. One of its coolest features is its domains. Each container gets its own domain name with the container name and then .orb, .local. So you can see if I click into my accounting service here, it's got accounting service .open telemetry demo .orb, .local. That's because it's using the project name here. So if I go down to my front end proxy, for example, which is going to be here, you can see that I have ports 8080 open, which is where the website is going to be hosted, and then also 10,000 as well for something to do with Grafana. But if I click on the front end proxy .open telemetry domain here, what you'll notice is it doesn't actually have the port number after this domain. What Orbstack has gone and done is it's automatically detecting web ports here and it's just running it at that domain for me. Don't worry though, you can still use port numbers if you want to, especially for other non-web services, something like Postgres, Redis or various things like that. You can actually even extend this with custom domains and wildcards too. But here's what's really cool as well is notice I didn't set up any HTTPS for any of these containers. Orbstack has actually gone and handled that out of the box for me. It handles the certificate generation, installation, reverse proxying, everything. You even get a really handy index page at orb.local. Let's go ahead and find all of your services. So no more do you have to just remember those port numbers and various other things. You can just go ahead and use the .orb.local domain or even set up your own custom one as as well if you want to. Speaking of that developer experience though, let me show you something that's gonna change the way you debug your containers. If we go back here, what you can see is there's a debug option here. And if you go ahead and open this up, it opens up your terminal and it connects to the Orbstack debug shell. Now, if you've ever worked with minimal or distroless containers, you know how painful debugging can be when there's no shell or basic commands available. Well, that's no longer going to be an issue for you. Unlike the regular Docker exec command, the debug shell here comes packed with everything you need. You get things like autocomplete, syntax highlighting, all of your favorite editors like Nano and Vim. And if you need to check out the system resources or make network requests, no problem. It comes with things like htop, curl, strace, and tons of other tools ready to go. Even better is your actually get a package manager as well to install over 80,000 packages. So say I wanted something like NeoVim, I could go ahead and install that. As you can see there, it's picked up that that command isn't available here. One of the really important things to know about this though is that this doesn't actually modify your containers. If you install a package through this debug shell, it's available across all of your containers and it doesn't actually install anything into them itself. So you can even use this with read-only containers as well. So you can have secure, minimal production images and still have all your favorite debug debugging tools available inside of them when you need them. Let me show you another great feature, and that is the way that Orbstack works with your files on Mac. It makes it super easy to go ahead and access your files in containers, images, and different things like that. 
So if I go back onto my front end here, so I'll go to the front end proxy, you can see that I have my site up and running. Well, what if I wanted to just switch out an image like this? Well, that's super simple. All I need to actually do is I can open up Finder here. If I drag this over here, you can see we actually have a location here called Orbstack. If I click into that, what you can see is we've got these Docker folder here. We've got container images and volumes. You can actually go and check out what's in all of these volumes. This one's empty, but obviously if you had some things in the volumes, you'd find out the folders in there. You can see the image files as well. So we've got Grafana, Valky, a load of other, and you can even go into the containers themselves. So say if I wanted to change that image, as I said, let's go find my image provider here. All I need to do now is go to static, this is the banner image that I've got here. I can double click this. This is just gonna open up and find us since this is literally just a file on my Mac. Again, you could do this with things like VS Code and a load of other things. I can now, let's say, go ahead and click markup and we could add some cool text onto here as well. So if I said something like subscribe to better stack, like so, something you should do. And then I go ahead and hit save on that and close this down, click okay, and then hit refresh on that. As you can see, that file has now changed on my front end. I've literally just changed a container file by using my macOS system. All I did was I opened up a file in Finder, edited it using Preview, which could have been any application on my Mac, and then saved it again. And it's changed that file within my container for me. Obviously a more real world use case would be using something like Terminal. If you need to make some quick changes, opening up a file in VS Code, making some quick code changes for maybe debugging purposes. And you can see there, it would be so simple. All you'd have to do is actually navigate to that file, whether it's through Terminal, Finder, or any other application and then you can just go ahead and modify it you don't have to mess around with creating temporary files and then using the command line to go ahead and transfer those or just using the command line itself to go ahead and make those changes you can literally just do it with the applications already on your mac it's that simple Moving on from Docker containers though, here's something for Kubernetes users. Orbstack includes a lightweight single node Kubernetes cluster that's optimized for development. This isn't your typical local Kubernetes setup either. It has some really cool time savers on top. First, forget about pushing things to your local registry. Any container image that is built here is immediately available to use in your pods. There's no extra steps needed. Second, all of your services just work. Things like your load balancer, which I have here, node port, cluster IP, they're all accessible directly from your Mac. There's no port forwarding or anything needed. You even get automatic domains like service name and k8.org.local here, like we could see. And if I go ahead and open that up, you can see at k8.org.local, I've got that Grafana instance that I'm running. All of your cluster.local domains are going to work right from your Mac, and you can even connect directly to the pod IPs as well for debugging as well. All of this included out of the box, even including the kubectl as well. And managing your cluster is as simple as using the orb start k8 command or orb stop k8 as well. They've added in some really nice developer experience features on top of Kubernetes there. But I've saved one of the best features here for last. Orbstack isn't just about containers. It can run full Linux machines with a variety of distros, similar to how Windows subsystem for Linux works. These aren't your typical heavy virtual machines either though. They're lightweight, they're heavily integrated with macOS, and they work exactly almost like traditional VMs, but without that performance overhead. So if I go ahead and create one here, you can see it's gonna spin up a Ubuntu VM for me. And once that's been created, we can click in here, see some information at a glance. We've got a domain, we've got the distro we're on, and we've got the username as well. But what's really cool, if I go ahead and open up a terminal, I can use the orb command line here and I can go into that VM. So this is now my VM command line. And you can actually see one of the cool things, if I list the files, these are my Mac OS files. So it's automatically connected the Linux VM to my Mac files and vice versa as well. So if I actually open up Finder, we get something similar to how we had in Docker. We get this orb stack folder, and now we can go into Ubuntu. And these are my Ubuntu machine files as well, working from my Mac OS file system. So I could go ahead and open up these files with anything I wanted to as well, like VS Code or anything like that. There's no extra steps needed to get that set up. Now, if you wanna go ahead and run some services in Linux, you can do exactly that. It's literally the exact same way you would if you were on your Ubuntu machine. So we can go ahead and do sudo apt install, and let's say we want Nginx here. We can go ahead and install that. And if we wanted to start that up, we can do that in the exact same way we would for Linux as well on Ubuntu. So we can say, go ahead and start Nginx like so. And that would all work out of the box. It's super simple to get set up. You get the absolute best of both worlds there. You get the power of a full Linux environment with the convenience and the speed of a container. So there you go, that is Orbstack. It's faster, more efficient, packed with more features that make development on a Mac actually enjoyable, and you get that powerful Linux VM capabilities as well. Go ahead and give it a try and let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.